If you clicked on this video, then you probably heard of Hidetaka Miyazaki. Not many people know his face, and he doesn't really do a lot of interviews, but he has changed the direction of video games over the decade permanently. And he did all of this while entering the video game industry at the age of 30. He's the creative mind behind the Souls genre, and he's currently directing Elden Ring. So, without further ado, here are 10 reasons that you should be hyped for Elden Ring. Elden Ring is the spiritual successor of Dark Souls, and I don't just mean the gameplay. It's already confirmed that it'll have that gritty and satisfying melee combat that the Soul games have already been known for. But that's not why most of us play these games. Yes, it's a big part of it, but it's just a small section of a larger package. What made Dark Souls so good was how immersive it was as a game. It sucks you into its world so successfully and in so many different ways. By creating your character, you felt closer to your in-game avatar. It's not just for looks, as you cover your character's face for most of the game anyway. Miyazaki's even said his infamous difficulty of the game was never his intention. It was just a design to add more satisfaction to the game's entire experience. In the Soul games, you can take down literal gods. It wouldn't make much sense if you could just kill them in like three hits. And this is really the heart of Miyazaki's game design in general. He takes traditional accepted game mechanics and then transforms them into something that's also new that will help tell the story of the game. So when Miyazaki says Elden Ring puts more focus on role-playing elements than before, that should already be an insanely good sign for the future. Making a game isn't a solo effort. Even the Stardew Valley guy had someone supporting him. But in the case of Elden Ring, Miyazaki managed to get A Song of Ice and Fire's author, George R. R. Martin, to work on the same game with him. To be clear, Miyazaki's relationship with him is just as a fanboy, like you and me. He asked for a meeting with George R. R. Martin because he loved his work, but also because he could. It's a weird collaboration in general. Miyazaki's games succeed specifically because they don't tell the stories in a traditional way. You have to go out of your way to find bits and pieces and then put them together yourself. That doesn't really seem like it would fit the style of a literature writer. So what they did was have Martin write the lore of the world and Miyazaka tell the story. What's both exciting and scary though is that George R.R. R. Martin's part is actually done. Elden Ring might end up finishing before A Song of Ice and Fire does, which is not going to be surprising if that's the case. Are you drunk? Not have my honor questioned by an imp? Yuka Kitamura is composing the soundtrack again. Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3 were all composed by Matoi Sakuraba. During the development of number 2, Yuka Kitamura is brought into board to support him. There isn't any confirmation that Sakuraba is working on Elden Ring, but this could be a good thing because Kitamura has confirmed that she is. Outside of the Soul series, the two main soundtracks she's composed are for Bloodborne and Sekiro, both of which show off her incredible range. Bloodborne focuses on a much more larger scale orchestral terror, as most of its music is reserved for only boss fights. The Sekiro is a lot more conscious in how it uses music. It comes through just exploring the world and its dynamic. It effortlessly changes between tense and serene whenever you're in combat or in stealth. Well, it was very exciting, but it was also very challenging. Compared to our older titles, which use a lot of kind of regal fantasy or very grandiose orchestral or choiral elements, this time it was obviously set in Japan, set in Sengoku. Uh, this is a very bloody period of conflict. And so we had to think about a lot more wildness to the nature of the track. Overall though, the design of Sekiro's soundtrack is purposely reminiscent of Dark Souls 1. The songs and other from software games aren't bad, I mean not at all, but they're used completely differently. In the first Dark Souls, Gwyn's theme is memorable to pretty much everyone who's played the game. But it's because of how different it is. It's a final boss fight, but with a slow and lonely piano the entire time. Hopefully, Kitamura's inclusion on this project means that we're moving towards a direction like that again. In Miyazaki's own words, the biggest difference between the previous games is the fact that Elden Ring is open world. To be honest, at first it sounds like a really strange type of marketing. Aren't normal Souls games open world? I mean, they're open. In a world. Well, in an interview with Xbox, Miyazaki described the open world on a level of both detail and freedom unlike anything that they'd done before. And that Elden Ring was their biggest title yet, just in the size alone. It seems like it's going to be less like connected levels and instead one giant sprawling world. But he clarifies that, calling the game a large open field with villages that are completely vacant and dungeon-like. 
and since the world is greater than any Souls games before it, the entire way the player can approach the world has been changed too. Elden Ring contains less handholding, more freedom for exploration, and even a horse that you can use, which comes with its own unique combat system when mounted. In fact, it sounds a lot less like Dark Souls and more like Shadow of the Colossus. We already know that Miyazaki is a huge fan of Fumito Ueta's fan, as Ico was one of his inspirations to begin developing games in the first place. We could potentially be looking at the artistic achievement on the scale as those games. Well, that if they ever release. The release date. I don't have it. But Elden Ring seems to be further along than it actually looks. From Software doesn't really normally release trailers for games until they're nearly finished. And on top of that, it's been in development for almost four years. They make Dark Souls in just two. Obviously, a worldwide pandemic has affected them too, as they would have had to slow down production. However, the marketing machine seems to be kicking in again. From Software recently released a Sekiro update at the end of October, and it was added all sorts of new features and costumes. But nobody was really asking for them. I mean, it's cool they did it, but why? Additionally, on the day it dropped, the official From Software Twitter account acknowledged the existence of Elden Ring for the first time in a year. And now, Phil Spencer has come out to say that he's been playing several builds of it, suggesting that it may be in a playable state. <laughs> I've seen actually quite a bit. I've played quite a bit. Uh, oh and man! I can't tell you. I can't. Uh, I can't tell you much other than as somebody who's played all of Miyazaki's games over the, at least the last decade, um, this is clearly the most ambitious game. They could be building up the hype for a release date reveal at Game Awards, but keep your expectations in check. Even if you hate the Souls games and have no intention of buying Elden Ring, you should still be insanely hyped for its release because games aren't made in a vacuum. Designers of games you enjoy most likely play games all the time. They wouldn't be in this industry otherwise. And let's be honest, they're definitely not making games so they could be crunching 100 hour work weeks. Developers often see mechanics used in other games they enjoy and appreciate, and they often find ways to rework them into their own. So let's go ahead and let them improve on their ideas and build a different experience around them. So let's say that you could never get into Dark Souls. Maybe it was just too difficult, or maybe it just didn't click. But maybe you enjoyed Breath of the Wild, or Jedi Fallen Order, or even Hollow Knight? The synchronous multiplayer and difficulty of Dark Souls has influenced thousands of games alone. Elden Ring will contain the DNA that future games build off of. Dark Souls' influence wasn't because it was a huge success when it was first released. It was just that developers fell in love with its design. Let's just be thankful that it had no microtransactions. What are some of the most common complaints Dark Souls 2 and 3 got? They were too similar to the games before them, and they were really repetitive when it came to the story and level design. They changed quite a lot a bit between the releases still, but when you make the game called Dark Souls, there are expectations that come with it. You know there has to be Estes, Bonfires, Hollows. There isn't always enough room for experimentation because customers want a specific thing. Compare that to the other From Software games in the same style, Sekiro, Bloodborne, and Demon's Souls are also different because you can't really compare them on the surface level. And a lot of the reasons that these games are loved as they are is because of how much is unknown by the players when they go into them. Most of the difficulty in these games is just from not knowing what's ahead of you. Whoa! What the f Scared the s*** out of me, dude! And you can only fully achieve that when you have a game that's not held to the expectations of something else. At this point, watching the community lose its collective minds has probably been more fun than the game will be. <gasps> oh, from software! If you're not on the hype train yet, then you should be. And don't worry, there's plenty of space. Since the game's been taking so long, the fanbase has started to go crazy. Over at the Elden Ring subreddit, fans have essentially just imagined their own game. People are posting fake concept art, making up their own lore of the game, and are even making a real game based off of this. It's a fantastic experience. The irony is, all the fans chasing this intangible hope in a distance is sort of the plot of the Souls games. Essentially, if you finally go mad from the lack of hope in those games, you go hollow. Anyone who gives up on Elden Ring now is essentially going hollow, and it's incredibly fun to watch in real time. Our ninth reason is the fact that Elden Ring is most likely coming to the next-gen consoles. It's not officially confirmed yet, but with the recent trend of cross-gen games, plus the pandemic giving it an extended development time, 
it would be a massively wasted opportunity if they didn't take advantage of it. Reading information off a disc or a hard drive is incredibly slow. Dark Souls 1 got around this by streaming data through the game. It would load areas as you walk through certain sections purposely designed to hide loading items. And the interconnected world is one of the best elements of Dark Souls 1. Now imagine if Elden Ring was running off next-gen SSDs. You could have the design of the first Dark Souls in a much bigger world with absolutely no visual loading times. So much of game design and programming in general is problem solving. We can't show this object because we won't load in time, for example. Using the PS5 and Xbox Series X could eliminate the need to hide loading from the player, freeing up development time in other areas. Literally. Every From Software game always has a giant cut area that's so close to being finished. Well, now they can. All of Miyazaki's games contain incredibly dark themes. The myth of Sisyphus and the eternal suffering, the finality of death and dealing with the loss of faith, just to name a few. And at a recent Japanese panel, Miyazaki confirmed Elden Ring is even more emotionally heavy. Apparently it deals with racism, politics, and even identity issues. But how does a fanbase confronted with so many philosophical terrors cope with them? Well, like this. Holy shit! Is this too easy for you? They're funny, they're memorable, and at the heart of them, they show how interconnected soul fans are as a community. The memes are a collective expression of fans trying to make sense of the horrifying worlds that Miyazaki and his teams are creating. It's one of those enormous inside jokes, and I think everyone could benefit from being a part of it right now. So, what did you think? Are you hyped about Elden Ring now? Were you before? All of this is ignoring a really detailed leak about the game that came out in July too. I recommend reading it, but try to avoid going hollow. What are you looking forward to the most about Elden Ring? Let us know in the comments down below, and as always, thanks for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day.